there. Welcome along to the sweet spot. Bruce Millington and Steve Palmer with the Racing Post's weekly golf show. And we've got a Ryder Cup special. Hooray! And it's my last ever sweet spot. Boo. I'll be saying a few thank yous at the end. But before that, we will get Steve's views on who is going to win in Rome, who's going to be top scorer, top rookie, all the extra markets. But before we do all that, we better look back on last week because... Steve, that was a week that reminded us how incredible golf betting is and golf in general. You know, the highs and lows, the twists and turns. We had a happy ending. It was extraordinary, wasn't it? Really, really brilliant. I think we better start with the Solheim Cup. I've got to say, I love the Solheim Cup. I, th I thought it was brilliant. I really got into it. Um, and just, you know, after 4-0 in the morning foursomes to America on day one, it looked like it could be a procession, but they fought back Europe and incredible suspense could have gone either way um what was your main emotion leaving the Solheim Cup well I'm sure the bookmakers enjoyed the Solheim Cup because whenever those team events are a draw you know they, they clean up don't they so um you know there'll be a few drawbackers out there it's 12 to 1 uh but most people would have pinned their colors to a side weren't they so um yeah yeah I'm I'm, I'm, I'm gutted for the for the punting community um and you're right that first session you know the american whitewash in the first session put put europe up against it europe dominated from there but but not enough uh, and, and even ling grant was, was close but no cigar which she, she finished third in the in the top point scorer market so yeah good knockabout stuff um but we're on to the to, without without being sexist we're on to the main event this week okay i, d I would just have one my last ever sweet spot ran i can't have ah. it that that you have a tie and you just go oh well they will they get it because they won it last time that is absolute nonsense <clears throat> it's, it's 2023 it's the same with the ashes oh yeah you know it was a drawn series so they won it last time so they can keep it come off it that's ridiculous if you got to the cup final and it was a draw, you wouldn't say, oh, well, they beat them in the league last time they met, so they win the cup. Come on, think of a way of doing it, right? And I thought of a way of deciding the Solheim Cup or indeed the Ryder Cup. It's a par five, the last hole. So each team picks five players, OK? One does the tee shot, one does the second, one does the third, one does the fourth, and if necessary, they have a fifth and a sixth, OK? Blimey. And 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 that's the playoff. You can't leave us on a draw. It's ridiculous. I, I, I don't know how everyone just accepts it. I think, you've say, I, I think you've saved your finest rant for the uh, for the final podcast because I absolutely agree with you. It has, they have to identify a winner. I mean, you must remember. Let's test you. You must remember. Oh, God, the, don't you, know, do the, the, <laughs> you will you will remember this one. The President's Cup, the famous President's <laughs> Cup, where darkness was descending. Tiger Woods and Ernie Els going at it. Uh, to determine the President's Cup winner. I mean, yeah, just I, I would make it a bit simpler than your version, to be perfectly frank. I would have um, the captains pick their player and then they go head to head for the okay. cup. Um, um, sudden death playoff. Um, well, I just thought yeah. it, it, it keeps the team ethos if, if you have them each doing a shot. And that way you sure. can pick your best driver, your best iron player, maybe your best chipper if it's a par five and then your best putter. But anyway, yeah, yeah. either yeah, way, yeah. you can't leave it like that, can you? No, you're right. We need winners and uh, they should it's listen to it. Mr. Okay. Solheim, Mrs. Solheim mm. should, 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 should take stock. Absolutely. Uh, they certainly should. Well, while the Solheim Cup was dominating the weekend, we had the French Open, and uh, that was another topsy-turvy event, <sighs> and no mistake. And in the end, it was uh, Ryu Hisasune, wasn't it, who came through 100 to 1 at the start of the week. And, and you'd actually identified him. Look back in the, in the price books last week, when you did the player comments, you said, dangerous outsider. Yeah, I've had my eye on Raul Asasuna for, for a little while now. Um, yeah, we backed him for the Scandinavian mix three months ago. Perhaps you should have stuck with him because he's such a good traveller. Yeah, unlike your average Japanese player, um, when he gets outside of his homeland, he, he, he's not scared. You know, most of the Japanese players don't play well outside of their homeland. You know, he finished runner-up in the Australian PGA last year, third in the Kenya Open, eighth in Denmark, tenth in the Barracuda Championship in California. Um, so, um, yeah, he has golf game, will travel. I think he's got a really bright future. Another really, really frustrating uh, weekend for Jordan Smith, wasn't it? He had that at his mercy. Um, yeah, yeah. Went off like six that. to four on Sunday and um, you had a six shot lead after two holes. I mean, the start of the, the final round was absolutely crazy. I mean, you know, you and you and Ferguson back as tearing their hair out at high noon. Um, obviously, we were on him at 70 to one. Really excited. Tied for the lead going to the final round. Did you watch the first hole he played? I didn't watch anything. I saw what I watch, happened. Oh, I you saw what happened. I had eyes for the Solheim. Two solid shots on, onto the green in regulation, then putted into the water. 
I mean, have, have you ever oh, seen? Did he yeah, oh, no, you, you didn't see what happened. Yeah, he's on the green in two at the first hole. The, the, the <laughs> green speeds, the green speeds have sped up as the week's gone on. So you have that deluge on Thursday. <laughs> by, by Sunday, they were really fast. He's been fooled. He's putting for birdie on the first hole. And he puts in the water. Can no you... way. I mean, I've done that. I've never seen a pro do it. What, what <laughs> you was your imagine. reaction to that? I, I, absolutely dumbfounded. I mean, you know, seconds earlier, I had Grace, Grace was in the lounge and I, I said to her, oh, we've got a good chance of a winner here. She's tied for the lead, tied for the lead. And she was going, oh, please for your dad, please for you. And then, uh, you know, seconds later, I, I was just, I, I've never seen that in my life. In my life. And then he followed that. up with another, another DB, a uh, third of things, didn't he? So yeah, he it, wait, no, double bogey, double bogey start. Yeah, the second hole, he went pin chasing. It, was, it wasn't a bad shot. It was just a tad aggressive because of what happened on the first hole. So double bogey, double bogey. And then he made a, a bogey at the fourth, so five over through through four, uh, and he, he was, and then 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 he teased me rotten because he parred like every hole. He's going to play still, you know. He's going to yeah, play. Yeah, I was, know. He was a million on to place at the start of the round, um, and then he, he doubled. Uh, he, he drove into the water at the final hole, um, so to drop to ten. Oh dear. Oh yeah. well. Yeah. But the good news came in America, didn't it? With yeah. Live Chicago, where. It looked like on Saturday, um, Bryson DeChambeau played his way out of the tournament. I don't know what price he was going into the final round, but it would have been a big old price. And he just absolutely caught fire. And and um, poor old um, uh, Lahiri buckled up front, didn't he? So, <laughs> so yeah. you ended up with a nice winner. Well played. You're absolutely right. It just shows how bonkers golf betting can be. Yeah, You wake up Sunday morning thinking you and Ferguson is your great hope. He bombs out. And then uh, Bryson DeChambeau, eight shots behind going into the final round, wins by one. He was under the weather at the start of the week. He said he was a bit throaty. Um, so he was he, he played throaty on Friday. He played throaty on Saturday, he missed lots of putts. But then on Sunday, he felt a lot better and he, he turned into beast mode um, and uh, with a 63. I mean, you know, he's in the form of his life. You know, he closed with a 58 to win the Greenbrier. Um mm. Yeah, he's won two of the last three live events, and um, you know he's playing better than he than he did when he won the U.S. Open. He won the 2020 U.S. Open. He says he's been playing better than that now. His, his crusher's teammate Paul Casey agrees with <laughs> agrees with him. I mean, the Paul Casey, the luckiest man alive last week. I mean, he, he finished 32nd out of 48. Um, uh, he, so he gets 148 thousand dollars for that. Uh, and then because uh, he was on the winning crushers team, he got seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars for that. So best part of a million dollars for finishing 32nd in, nice. in, in a full shape. Nice. Uh, nice. Yeah, Paul Casey's happy. But yeah, Bryson DeChambeau is back to his best. Very exciting times for DeChambeau. Well, I, bet, fan. I bet you floated up the stairs to bed Sunday night, didn't you? Well, I was already in bed, actually. Yeah, oh, yeah. I've, been, I've been a bit throaty as well. So wow. I, I, I went to bed at 8 p.m. With, yeah, because obviously with your with your phone, you watch it on your device, don't you? Mm. Uh, Live golf. So um, yeah, the, the, the French Open was pretty heartbreaking stuff. And then uh, I went to bed early, feeling a bit throaty. Watched Live golf in bed, and uh, yeah, it's one of the most exciting bit of bit of bedtime I've ever had. <laughs> That's good. Uh, so that's put a spring in your step as we enter the big week. Then, is it? Should we look ahead to the Ryder Cup right now? It's a big one. It's a big one. It um, certainly is. Do you want to do some scene setting, Steve? Tell us. Uh, remind everyone, because you know we'll have some viewers who aren't absolutely totally au fait with it all. Tell us when, where, and uh, that's about it, really. <laughs> let me scene set. Yeah. Let me let okay. me schedule set. Yeah. You know, that's always yeah, a good starting point, isn't it? At six thirty-five a.m. on Friday, UK time. You'll be watching four foursomes matches. And then at 11.25 a.m. on Friday, we'll be watching four four balls matches. And then on Saturday, it's the repeat of, of, of that of that set. Um, and then on Sunday, we have 12 singles matches, which start a bit later, 10.35 a.m. Like uh, it. Very good. So, very good uh, schedule very, setting. Yeah. And where, where is it and what kind of track is it? It's the Marco Simone Golf and Country Club, 7,268 yards from the tips. That's the max maximum we can get out of it. Par 71, only three par fives. It's hosted the Italian Open from 2021 onwards. So we've got three years of course form to look at. The first two editions of that tournament were in September. The last one was in May. Nikolai Hogar, Robert McIntyre and Adrian Moronk were the, were the winners. Team Europe get to set the course up how they wish. Um, they've grown the rough. Really nice and juicy. It's been a hot summer in Rome, so um, the track playing firm and fast. And the weather forecast is is sublime. Um, I'd love to be out there. Sunny, warm and calm throughout. Temperatures peaking at 29C. Oh, lovely. How nice. And I think there's a little bit more daylight in Rome than there was in Spain. So 
any concerns about not having enough daylight? Because obviously we, we've got the uber snails like Patrick Cantlay playing here and it's always slow. They always faff about over every part and every single captain and vice captain has to have their say on whether there's a bit of left to right in it. But we should just about be OK, shouldn't we? Yeah, we should be. We should be. And uh, I mean, if, if we get a draw, we get a draw. So it's the same the same deal, isn't it? Mm, it is. OK, right then. Um, latest betting, roughly USA, just about favourites, kind of five to six. Shop around, you might get a bit bigger. Europe, six to five in the draw, 12 to one. I'll take you through the top player markets in each team. For Europe, John Rahm is currently favourite at 17 to four. Then it's nine to two, Rory McIlroy, 19 to four, Victor Hovland, 13 to two, Tommy Fleetwood, eight Hatton, nine Fitzpatrick, 10 Aberg, as I call him, and you don't, and 14 Bar. And for the USA, Scheffler, 9-2, Fav, Cantlay, 11-2, Chauffele, 6-1, 17-2, Morikawa, 10 bar. Steve, can we talk about the pairings before we talk about anything else, please? I, I noticed with interest that the um, the day one, the Tuesday practice, four balls were named just now. And um, I might be reading a bit too much into it, but I thought it was interesting. I'll, I'll quickly spin through them. Europe, you've got Fleetwood, Stracker, Lowry, McElroy. Ram Hovland, Hatton, Aberg, and then Fitzpatrick, Rose, McIntyre, Nikolai Hogard. For America, you've got those four great buddies, Spieth, Cantlay, Schofield, and Thomas going out together. You've got Morikawa, Harmon, Fowler, and Homer. And then you've got Scheffler, Kupka, Clark, and Burns. My little takeout from that is that I think he might take I think he might fancy Stracker for a slightly more prominent role than others do. But you're the expert. Tell us what you think the pairings might be. Well, I noticed on the first day of official practice, Europe went out in sixes, didn't they? It just seems like a sort of free for all. I sort of feel like the Europeans are just working on a whole team vibe at the moment. Um, I don't I'm not reading too much into those those practices. But I think the Americans is very much a pod system, isn't it? I mean, it's very easy to work out how the Americans are going to set up, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. Scotty Sheffer and Sam Burns want to play with each other. Um, Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth want to play with each other. Uh, I think Max Homer will be with Colin Morikawa at some stage, maybe with Wyndham Clark. I'll come to that later as to, as to why I think Wyndham Clark might be Homer's partner. Um, yeah, I think and then Chauffele and Cantley, I guess, as well, isn't it? Chauffele, Chauffele and Cantley, of course. And I don't think Zach Johnson is a, is a strong enough leader to... To, to to make bold decisions uh, oh, to, really? to step into Graham Taylor's speed. No, I think he's mm. very player led. I'm getting that impression that he's very player led, and I think um, if JT says I want speed, he gets him. Um, so I think yeah, I think the Americans are picking themselves, so to speak. JT's um, in no position, so who he plays with, he should be he should be sitting it out. He should be in a buggy the way he's right. been playing. You make very oh, good points. You make. What very about good the points. European pairings? What might they look like? Um, I think Victor Hovland and Ludwig Obear. Are, um, are booked to go together. Um, I'll get on to that later because one of them is my, my top European pick. Um, I think, um, you know, I'm obsessed with balls. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> for, 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 I have an obsession they've with balls. They've got to be ball mates um, as well, haven't they? They've got to be. Ideally, they've got to be ball mates because um, they, they did tinker with the rules a few years back. You are allowed to have a different ball on different holes, but you must start the foursomes with the same ball that you finished the, the hole with. You must start the hole with this. You know yeah. what I'm getting at. Did yeah, I yeah, explain so, yeah. that correctly? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think it, it, it is useful in foursomes if you play the same balls. And um, with, with Europe, you've got five members of the European team uh, use, use a, a version of the Titleist Pro V1. Um, so, um, yeah, Ludwig Aubert and Victor Hovland use, use Titleist Pro V1s. I think they, 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 if, if, yeah, if he pairs them in the foursomes, they, he could stick with them for the, for the, for the duration. Um, Hovland could also go with Rory McIlroy. They're good friends. Different balls, maybe four balls for those two. Um, yeah, the European partners are much difficult, much more difficult to get. I mean, you talk about Sepp Stracker. You're keen on Sepp Stracker. I can sense you're looking for a Stracker bet. He's the only, he's the only, um, him and Shane Larry, the only Strixon users. Oh. Um, so if you'd be happy if you got paired with Shane Larry, wouldn't you? Um, you just want him to play, don't you? If you're you want him to play, but yeah, yeah, you just want him to play. You want him to play. He's got potential to play with Shane Larry in the foursomes, I'd say. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'll come to it all later. There's one okay. man who I think okay. is, the, is, 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 the, is the one you should be concentrating on, Team Europe. Um, I might have given you some clues there. Well, yeah, but let, let's not jump the gun on all that. Let's start with the basic question. Who is going to win the 2023 Ryder Cup? 
Yeah, this is this is a much easier question to answer because I think I think they're, they're the the wrong favourites. I think Team Europe should be favourites. You can get odds against. I'm delighted to get odds against. Six to five is the best available as we as we live and breathe. Uh, the United States have failed to win away from home for 30 years. That's amazing, um, isn't it? That it's, it's 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 a long victory drought. I see it continuing. Um, home advantage is always the most important factor in in in, in this competition. I always back the home side, and they they nearly always win. You know, seven of the last eight Ryder Cup matches have been won by the home side. The United States have won just one of the last nine Ryder Cups staged in Europe. That was a 15-13 success at the Belfry in 1993. Uh, yeah, your your um your successor Jack Reed wouldn't have been alive the last time the Americans. He wouldn't. Uh, he wouldn't. Won, won away from home. We'll have to tell him all about that. Yeah. Um, and obviously the galleries play a significant role. They do all they can to help the home side. They cackle with glee when the uh, the, the visiting side makes a mistake, don't they? Yeah, they cheer yeah. Missed, missed putts. It's, it's, yeah. it's horrible to miss a tiddler. It's and get... pretty bad, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, it's life, isn't it? It's life. But it is a fact. Uh, and I also think as well, Steve, just on a slightly different level, I don't think America do team sports that well. They just, they don't, they, you know, they don't have international, they don't have that history of, of international com- competition do they a lot of their sports are fairly sort of idiosyncratic and th- mm. there isn't like a massive international community playing nf you know gridiron or baseball or whatever so i'm not right. sure they've got that mentality and also think they aren't really used to pulling together like like maybe the europeans are so i yeah. think home advantage is going to be massive and they're not used to traveling as much are they they don't yeah you know, they, they don't need to because you know the pga tour is essentially in their in their neck of the woods and mm. you, know, you know you get lots of americans that don't even own a passport don't you i'm just talking generally now because the you know, americans got everything they need to offer they don't need to travel i mean you sometimes they're... you used to get golfers that would win qualify for the open american golfers, and they'd have to go and get a passport you know yeah. sharpish wouldn't they yeah yeah well, well steve stricker we've talked about recently this year he doesn't like coming over for the for the senior british open just doesn't fancy it they just, they just don't travel as well. I mean, they've probably all been watching Gladiator, haven't they, these players? They probably think they're going to have tigers and lions coming at them at the Marco Simone. They wouldn't have been to Italy before. <laughs> they, they might be overplaying been... <laughs> this a little bit. <laughs> they were, they, most of them wouldn't have been to Italy before, and they'll be like, oh, blimey, where's the tigers? Where's the lions? Yeah, the Colosseum, the Marco Simone Colosseum. Uh, so I, I think they, they, they know it's going to be intimidating. It will be intimidating. There won't be any lions and tigers, but it will be intimidating. And course knowledge, of course, is, is most important. It's seven of this week's Europe. European team have played in the Italian Open at the Marco Simone. Zero of the Americans have done. You know, Europe have two course winners in their team, Nikolai Hogar and Robert McIntyre. And Europe's course form in those Italian Opens is wholly positive. You know, pretty much wholly positive. Tommy Fleetwood finished runner-up in the 2021 Italian Open. Matt Fitzpatrick lost a playoff uh, in the 2022 Italian Open. Rory McIlroy was fourth that year. Tyrrell Hatton was eighth. You know, they hold all the aces on, on course-wise. And America... They couldn't even get their full team there for the scouting trip. You know, never mind not no. playing the Italian. They couldn't, three of them couldn't be asked to go over for the scouting trip. You know, Jordan Spieth, Patrick Cartley and Xander Schiaffele made their excuses. You know, and, and, and Europe get to set the course up as they as they wished. It will play to their strengths. I, I, I listened to a podcast Rory McIlroy did. Um, and he said it, they, they want it set up for, for for driving. You know, long, straight driving is, is going to be the key to, to winning matches this week. The rough's up. The rough's up. But it's, it's, it's a course that you want to be attacking. There's lots of risk reward holes. So, you know, long straight driving will win matches this week. Europe have got the best drivers um, and Europe have got three of the top four players in the world. Bruce, you know, mm. you know I've had America backers coming on to me saying, look at the world rankings, look at the world rankings. Well, I will look at the bloody world rankings. <laughs> uh, three of the top four yeah. uh, are, are European. I mean, um, yeah, Rory McIlroy, John Rahm, Victor Hovland. You know, what a strong, you know, holy trinity to build your build your um Build your foundation for, your, for winning the cup. And remember, please, please remember, uh, only eight players on each side play in, in each session, don't they? You can, you can... They don't have that rule. Do they have that rule like they do in the Solheim Cup that everyone has to play at least one game before no. the singles? No, 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 no I, don't, I don't think so. No, they cert- well, they certainly didn't have it, have it when Mark James famously did that with uh, Andrew Coltart and Yarmo Sandlin. He left them mm. out for the entirety. I'm pretty sure they don't have that rule anymore. I mean, okay. you can argue. You can argue if you wish that the American tail is is stronger than the European tail. I I I, I would actually challenge that assertion, but mm. um, you can't argue that the European top order is weaker. Uh, it, it 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 just isn't. And um, yeah, as I say, the world rankings. If you get your calculator out, USA twelve point nine average, Europe twenty nine point three average. 
Um, but as I say, four players can sit out each session. I would argue that the, the world rankings of Ludwig Obar and the world ranking of Nikolai Hogar are erroneous. You know, Obar will be a top 10 player in the world by the end of next year. Hogar will be a top 20 player in the world by the end of next year. They're currently 80th and 82nd. So that skews that that ranking argument a bit. Okay. And um, if I may, I would urge you to forget... I'm always asking you to remember things, and I, but I, would ask you to, I would ask you to forget 2021. Because again, like there's plenty of USA backers out there. The, the, the world seems to be split on who's going to win this. Forget 2021. Yeah, you know, whistling straights. That was obviously a comfortable American success, but that was an informed team. It was a formidable team. They had an excellent captain who had already led America to the President's Cup glory in a resounding fashion. Two years later, here we are. Dustin Johnson, the man who went five and zero in that 2021 match, has, has not been selected. Bryson DeChambeau, who was unbeaten in that 2021 match, has not been selected. And the captain, as I, as I alluded to, is a, is a rookie. I'm not convinced by Zach Johnson as a, as a captain. He looked extremely nervous in the media conference yesterday, sipping his water. Um, yeah, I, I, and, and did you see him on the scouting trip? He was lined up on the practice range alongside all the players, hitting balls. He was hitting balls as if he was a player. I was like, what? What are you doing? Why are you hitting balls? Yeah. Watch the players, guide the players. You're not playing in this. That's what Glenn Hoddle did. Do you remember when Glenn Hoddle was England coach and he'd be out there doing keepy uppies and all that and then slagging the players off if they couldn't do it as well as he did? Yeah, you can't <laughs> exactly. Do that, can you? Exactly. I just, yeah. I just, I just, he's doing things that I'm sort of finding a little bit bemusing. Uh, okay. So, yeah, forget whistling straights. Have you forgotten whistling straights yet? I completely. Although I will say before I totally forget it that obviously the European team has had a massive refresh from then. I was looking through. The yeah. team they had there, you had the likes of Casey and Garcia and Poulter and Westwood. The, the old guard have been swept aside, haven't they? Mainly because they've all gone to earn mega bucks on live. But uh, do you like yeah. the freshness and the, the youthful exuberance of the Europeans? They, I do. I absolutely do. They have Thank been God swept. you do. I would have felt terribly if you just gone, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they have been swept aside. And you mentioned live. I think they would have been swept aside regardless of Liv. Mm. I don't think they're. I don't think they're anywhere near as good as the as the current crop. I mean, they, you know, you get your Sergio Garcia fans, and you know, John Rahm always seems to have this desperation to stick yeah, up get for his, over his it. compatriot. Honestly, yeah, you know, I and, agree with you know, that. I wouldn't have Sergio Garcia no, on the team a, if, he, if he if he was playing. He's a rotten you know, apple now. He's a rotten apple, but regardless of his abhorrent behaviour during all this um, all this politics, I wouldn't have had him. I wouldn't have had anywhere near the team. I mean, he missed the cut in an Asian tour event the other day. Um, but you need to forget whistling straight I because am. okay, uh, <laughs> because I have a question for you. This, this, this okay. is a fascinating question. Where was the last Ryder Cup? <laughs> <laughs> don't know. I forgot. Yeah. I got. I got a great. I don't expect you to get the answer to this. If you okay. get the answer, you're hugely impressed. But do you know who was the lowest ranked player in that 2021 American Ryder Cup team? The lowest ranked. The player. lowest ranked player. And this is just to explain how good that team was. No, obviously not. No chance. <laughs> it sounded like a flushing toilet there. <laughs> no, it was just the, the sound of a bloke whose who's memory's completely shot. Go on, who was it? Scotty Scheffler. Oh who was who was who was who was world number twenty yeah, one? It wasn't quite the same player. He, he, he was world number twenty one at the time, uh, but the average world ranking of that team was eight point nine. I mean, you had every right to wax lyrical about that team. They, they were full of form. It was a dream team. Two years later, this team is nothing to write home about, in my opinion. You know, you, the, the the Americans have hardly been playing golf. You know, they, they've hardly had any competitive action. You, you had Europeans swarming all over that Wentworth leaderboard the other day, mm. the BMW PGA in September. Max Homer, Justin Thomas and Brooks Kupka are the only Americans who have played competitive golf. Yeah, Wyndham Clark wanted to play in that Fortinet Championship a couple of weeks ago, but he got ill before it and, and pulled out. Um, so only three of the American side have been active in, in September. You know, Europe have been more active. They're in better form. I think they take a healthy lead into the singles. And then, yeah, I think it's, it's Europe all the way. They do enough to stay in front of Sunday. Love it. You make a brilliant case there, Steve. Excellent. Love that. I will have a second mini rant, if I may, just about, yeah. and it's a general point, but it may also affect this um, on Sunday and, and uh, at some point next week. There is an increase in complaints from players, and they're obviously valid, they wouldn't dream them up, of punters heckling players because they've cost them a bet. I find that utterly <laughs> pathetic. Uh, if you're a punter and you go to golf and a player sticks it in the bunker and then fails to get up and down and you lose your pathetic little three ball bet because of that. Shut up. Don't start heckling the player. You are an embarrassment. Don't bet. Don't go to golf and don't complain. 
that's my final sweet spot rant. <laughs> I think there's still time for another one. There, there's... No, I think that'll be it. I think that'll be <laughs> it. I'm feeling good. Right, where should we go next? Should we go into the individual team top scorers? I think maybe we should get the correct score out of the way and then move oh, okay, on let's that. do that. Then. Um, yeah, let's I will just have one correct score stab. Um, okay. Because, as I say, I think the Europeans are going to get a healthy lead, but I can see the Americans doing well on Sunday. Yeah, they've got used to the course by then. Some of the rust to be coming off. So I, I'm going to go for a, a cosy 15-13 European win. I what think price big, is that? That is 12 to 1. 12 to 1. Okay. I think they have a big lead and then a little small rally from the Americans to make the score respectable. Okay. Excellent. 15-13 to Europe. So we'll look at the top European uh, point scorer. Who do you fancy for that? I love Victor Hovland at 11 to 2, the FedEx Cup champion, the most informed player on the planet, one of the best drivers in the world. This is a driver's course. He's got competitive experience of the Marco Simone from September's Italian Open last year. Um, I think he'll come on massively for that run out he had in 2021. He was a rookie two years ago. I ask you to forget Winston Straits, but I will remind you of Victor Hovland's performance there. What a, what a baptism of fire that was. You know, against that American side in front of that crowd. And Hovland was really unlucky with his playing partners in his draw. He partnered Paul Casey in the opening foursomes against Dustin Johnson and Colin Morikawa. <laughs> Understandable defeat there. He got Tommy Fleetwood for the Friday afternoon four balls. Not a bad partner. But they were up against Patrick Cartley and Justin Thomas. Uh, they scrapped a half point out of that. On the Saturday, Hovland was sent out in the morning with Bernd Wiesberger. Um <laughs> By that point, do you remember, yeah, Captain Harrington was losing his marbles by uh, that point. Um, yeah, two rookies, lambs to the slaughter against Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth. And then Hovland and Fleet would back out again against Bryson DeChambeau and Scotty Scheffler in the final four balls. Um, and then even on the singles, Hovland was unlucky. He drew Colin Morikawa. Please bear in mind, Colin Morikawa just won the Open Championship, world number three at the time. And he scrapped a good half point against his old, his old college mucker there. So a total of one point from a terrible draw and your Ryder Cup debut, I'm certain Hovland will be winning more than one point this time. I think he might win five points. I think mm. he's the most, I think he's the most likely player to play five, five matches this week. So who, who do you think he'll play with in, in the morning foursomes on Friday? I think he, he, he might throw Ludwig Obar in there straight away. I think there's, I think there's only four players in the European side that could play five matches. Um, I think that I think Victor Hovland, you know, he can run through brick walls. Victor Hovland, I think Victor Hovland could play five matches. I think uh, Ludwig Obea could play five matches. I mean, do you remember what happened in 2016 Ryder Cup with uh, with Thomas Peters? Yeah, you know, do you remember Thomas Peters? He, he was. Well, a, I remember he, him. Yeah, I can't, you tipped well, him we can't, every week. I can't yeah, he can't go. Your final I don't remember podcast. what happened in the 2016 Ryder Cup, mate. <laughs> well, well, he, he 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 was he was a wild card. Darren Clark picked him as a wild card, and he sent him out in the first match. And um, he, he ended up playing five matches and won four points. He was the top scorer in the oh. in the whole competition. So you I think, think Aberg could do that? I yeah? think potentially. I think potentially. But I, I think Hovland's a safer bet. Um, so, yeah, I think Hovland will either play with Obea or he'll play with um, or Rory McIlroy in the four balls. Um, and then, and then you, we mentioned the balls. You know, the, the, the other Titleist Pro V1 guys, Matt Fitzpatrick, Tyrrell Hatton, Justin Rose. I mean, they, they'd be good foursomes foils as well. So I can't see I can't see him failing to make an impact. Yeah, I'm all over Hovland this week. Who are the other players you think will play all four? Rahm and McElroy, all, all five. Rahm and McElroy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think um, okay. I think I think McElroy, Rahm and Obey. Yeah, I, I mean McElroy's fitness is not 100 percent guaranteed. He had back issues at the um, mm. at the Tour Championship. Um, did you bump into him and in, in, you were not? You were not I was in Mykonos when he was there. No, I didn't bump into him. He, he would go to slightly uh, swankier places than I would. Yeah, but, yeah, he was uh, on a no. stag do, wasn't he? So anything mm. could have happened on that stag do. You know, he might have, um, you know, he might have hurt I'm himself. I'm sure he behaved stag-do. himself. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, they're the four potential five matches. <laughs> okay, fine. So, so it's Victor Hovland at eleven to two. Is that a straight up win only, or would you avail yourself of a fifth of three and go each way? Do you think? I think yeah, it depends how much finance you got, doesn't it? I mean, an each way bet's a very solid investment. Uh, okay. Yeah, pay, pay for your win part, your bet. All right, and and the American top scorer, who do you think will uh, win that? I think the value lies with Max Homer. Uh, 10 to 1 Max Homer, so impressive on his President's Cup debut last year. He won all four of his matches. He was awesome on the pressure putts. He beat Tom Kim in the singles, you might remember. Yeah, Tom Kim was threatening to become the star of the competition for the internationals. Homer brought him down a peg or two on the, on the Sunday. Yeah, Homer was desperate to represent the United States as a, as a pro. Um, took to the job like a duck to water. I think his Ryder Cup debut will, will go a similar way. Gets on great with Colin Morikawa. They're always 
blowing sunshine up each other's bottoms on the on Twitter <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> That's possible. Yeah, they love each other, and I think they're they're destined to play with each other this week. Both California known each other for ages. They played in the Zurich Classic pairs event in April um, together. Um, so yeah, Homer's either going to get Morikawa as a partner, which would be a strong, and he might get Wyndham Clark, as I alluded to earlier on. Wyndham Clark lives in the same city as as Max Homer. They're both Scottsdale residents now. And then the last few weeks, I saw an interview with Wyndham Clark, and he, he revealed he'd been playing lots of foursomes golf with Max Homer. They've been practicing foursomes golf together. I don't think Zach Johnson will want to waste that practice that uh, those two have been been doing. Um, you know, maybe Homer will play with Wyndham Clark. You know, the US Open champion in, in the foursomes, maybe Morikara in the four balls or the other way around. But I think Homer's going to score points. Mm, interesting. Would you have a cut at Hovland for top overall point scorer, do you think? I ruddy well would. I ruddy well would. And I'm glad you said that because I think Europe will win the most points. I think Europe will have the top point scorer. Uh, and I think it'd be one of those four Europeans I mentioned um, okay. Hovland the most solid. Yeah, Hovland is one I'd fancy most to win his singles match. All right. Well, there's zillions of other markets, so I'm going to throw it open to you now to let me know what else you fancy. Yeah, there are zillions. And, um, yeah, I, I, I will be going through the specials in more detail in Thursday's Racing Post. I, I, oh, I well, have we got a pull out on Thursday? I'm not sure how they're going to present it, but um, we've certainly, certainly got some... a bumper package, isn't bumper it? Bumper package. is a bumper. I can promise you a bumper package. <laughs> I can never make that promise to my wife, but I can make that promise to you. And uh, I've got three... I'll give you three of my best specials. How's about okay, that? Okay, please do. Um, because I, I think there's, there's two even money chances that I really like the look of. And then I've got a more speculative eight to one chance. And the, the two even money chances are essentially the same bet, I think, because they're going to be paired together. Jordan Spieth to score one and a half points or fewer is an even money chance. I I'm, I'm opposing Jordan Spieth here. I don't see that Spieth-Thomas partnership working out well this time. I don't think Zach Johnson will be brave enough to split them, as, as, I, as I said. Spieth has just had his first daughter. Do you know about that? Sophie Sophie Spieth has entered the world um, and his eye has been off the ball. You know, he's been focusing on the arrival of Sophie Spieth. There's plenty of rust. In I'm trying Jordan. to work out. I'm, hang on a sec. There's a, Sophie is almost an anagram of Spieth, isn't it? Just think how many common letters there are in, in those two names. Yeah, you're right. The S, the P, the H, the I and the E. It's just the O, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Well, may, maybe that was their thinking. It's a lovely name, isn't it? Mm. Um, but, um, you know, his, his eyes off the ball, and he had rust in his system anyway because he hadn't played since the Tour Championship, and he was rubbish in that Tour Championship. You know, if he goes with Justin Thomas, who's really low on confidence, you know, you saw Justin Thomas in the final round of that Fortinet Championship. He, he was in contention for that, and Sahith Thagala just blew him away. I mean, Justin Thomas was two over par through five holes of that final round. He, he was he was he was five shots worse than Sahith Figaro over those opening five holes. I think that showed the fragility in Thomas now, even though there's signs of life. Very wild with the driver again. Mm. He, he, I just think Spieth and Thomas is a recipe for disaster at the Marco Simone. I think that they're, they're, they're too many loose shots, be hacking out the rough on several occasions. And Spieth's never won a Ryder Cup singles match. I mean, <laughs> that's mad, isn't it? Yeah, that is interesting. Is it, is it, I, I think as well, Steve, that although you might say that Zach Johnson might bow a little too much to player power. You know, if they have a bad Friday and certainly a bad Saturday morning as well, I think he'll have to bench the money. He'll have no choice. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, Thomas is lucky to be there in the first place. And, and Spieth isn't in that big league anymore. He's tier two, isn't he? Yeah, I think you're right. I think that, okay. I, I think that I either play badly or, as you say, be used sparingly from, from Friday on. So you're tipping it, both of those to score fewer than one individual, one and a half individual points, yeah? Yeah, it's the, it's the same bet, same price. You can get 1.5 points or fewer, even money about both of those players. OK, and what's the other one you got for us? And then the other one is uh, a bit more speculative. Yeah, just trying to read Luke Donald's mind. But Justin Rose to, to go out last in the singles. Uh, that, that I've seen eight to one. There, there might be there might be better out there, but eight to one will do for me. I think Luke Donald would load the front end of the singles with his big guns, your Hovlands, your Rams, your McElroys. I think with his tail, he'd go with his two oldest players because if if it goes to the wire, you know you need a wise old head to be able to handle it. Uh, I think Shane Larry may go out number eleven. I think you know Justin Rose may go out number twelve. You know Donald's compatriot. I think yeah, love yeah, it. Yeah. Two major champions at the tail in case it goes to the wire. Eight to one. That's interesting. Excellent. Mm. As Steve says, on Thursday in the Racing Post, there will be a huge Ryder Cup special with all sorts of goodies. Uh, more tips from Steve and stats and everything else 
And don't forget to let us know who you fancy in the comments below. And if you enjoy the show, as always, do please like, subscribe, rate and share. Now, I've got, I got that wrong. It's not rate, That's is wrong. it? I do rate. <laughs> I don't know. I hate you rate. do that. Comment and share. <laughs> I still haven't learned it, but it doesn't matter anymore. Oh. <laughs> Because well, we it's got my last ever show. Oh, what else we got, Steve? Well, I was just going to mention my, my my colleague Mark has asked me to mention that. Oh yes, uh, yeah, um, some exciting, are. some new videos. Yeah. Yeah, between the sessions, there's obviously so little time between sessions on the Friday and the Saturday, uh, but we are going to uh, attempt to get uh, video tips on the on on our on our Twitter website. Um, between those, it's not even called Twitter anymore, is it? <laughs> X or everything. It's not. It's not. Our Twitter website either is it? Is it what is it? Spaces or something? Is it spaces. I was claiming to be Elon Musk there, wasn't I? Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. Spaces. We'll have it on Spaces okay. uh, in between sessions. So look out for for Racing Post Sport on Twitter between sessions, and we'll try and get some bets on between sessions. Brilliant, excellent stuff. Good. So you're excited for it, Steve? Are you? I'm excited. I'm very excited. Do you want a long tip reiteration before we start crying for a bit? We, we, we're oh, we're we're scheduled been, one we're, hour of crying. <laughs> I know that was, your suggested running order was an hour of crying and then some tips at the end. But yeah, we'll, we've reversed we'll, we'll, it now. Yeah, we have. We'll get your tips. So what, what are the what are the Ryder Cup best bets? Europe to win the cup. Europe to win 15-13 correct score. Victor Hovland top European. Max Homer top American. Victor Hovland, top overall point scorer. Jordan Spieth to score 1.5 points or fewer. Justin Thomas to score 1.5 points or fewer. And Justin Rose to go out last for Europe in the singles. And um, now we're going to cry for one hour and see how many people stay tuned. B before we do it, I just quickly want to ask you about Brian Harmon, because I've got this thing that Brian oh, yes. Harmon is going to have a really, really good Ryder Cup. I've got a feeling that, jo that if Johnson is going to take a chance... He's going to blood the Open champion. I think he sees a lot of himself in there. Short, accurate hitter. Yeah. I think a lot of the big guns will like him as a steady foil, either in the foursomes or the four balls. What do you think? Do you think I'm barking up the wrong tree, he'll sit it out and then get snotted by someone in the Sunday singles or what? You'll know early, won't you, whether you're onto a good one or not, because he, he has to play in the foursomes, I think, if he's going to play anywhere on that opening day. I think Brooks Kepka could be, could be his partner. I mean, they, they seem like the two odd men out, really. A sort there's, of maverick duo. Well, there's no natural partner for either of them, I'd say. No. Um, so put them both together. I mean, they can put their differences to one side, can't they, for a, for a week? Uh, so, yeah, it, I think Kupka, Kupka, Kupka and, um, and, and your man Harmon will play in the foursomes on, on Friday morning. And then if they click, anything could happen from there. Yeah, I know you do like your... Your Harmon, but um. well, I saw he was five to four to score more than one point, and I just thought he, I think he's going to be a really hard guy to beat in the singles. So yeah. I'm full of hope that uh, Harmon has a good Ryder Cup, but obviously I shall be following you in on Europe. Right then, anything else on the Ryder Cup? No, no, no. Let's do, let's talk about the last 23 years and how emotional this is. No, I, I, before we do go, obviously it is my last show, and I do want to say a few things. Um, I want to start with Jack Reeve. Jack. Absolutely brilliant guy, such a gentleman. He's a great, great lad, but he's also an extremely talented fella. He will be brilliant as the new permanent host of the Sweet Spot, not least because he's one of only about 14 humans that Steve actually likes. So that's a great <laughs> head start. Jack, I have had the most fun presenting this show, and I know you are going to love it. So good luck, Jack. Well done to you. Um, I want to talk about Will Carey, who is our brilliant producer, the unsung hero of the sweet spot. His professionalism, his expertise, his patience, knitting the show back together after it's fallen apart, after all my mistakes, has really, really been you know, a great pleasure. He does all the hard work. He enables me and Steve to just come on at 10 o'clock every Tuesday morning and just start nattering away. So many thanks, Will. You are a superstar. I'd also like to say thank you to all the... Other guests we've had on the show down the years, some connected, obviously, to our bookmaker sponsors. Ian McLaughlin was brilliant. Glenn Day, we used to love having Glenn on, didn't we? Absolutely brilliant. You mentioned Reesburger. He used to love tipping Reesburger, <laughs> didn't he? He was brilliant. And, of course, who can forget those epic cameos from the great Brendan Duke on Sweet Spot Live? I think one of my all-time highlights, Steve, was when he revealed that he's, he'd met his current girlfriend on a countdown convention on the outskirts of Donegal. Absolutely brilliant. He's a, he's a total superstar. Thanks to Wilco and to James Mason and to Joe Champion, who've stood in for Steve when he's been away. Um, obviously, huge thank you to you guys, the lovely Sweet Sport audience. I mean, when we started this show, we didn't know how big it was going to 
get or how long it was going to last. But, you know, we've got an audience now running into many thousands. And it's not just that you tune in and watch or listen to us, but we have fantastic interactions, you know, on social media, on the YouTube comments, loads of thumbs up. But also in person, Steve, you were at Wentworth the other week, weren't you? And had lots of people come and yeah. say how much they like the show. And I did a park run in Tooting a couple of weeks ago and a chat came, really nice fella came up afterwards and said hello. And he just said, you don't know me, but I, I love the sweet spot. So, you know, it's been a really real pleasure to do this show. And, you know, Steve and I, I know I speak on behalf of Steve. We really do appreciate all the feedback we get from you guys. So thanks very much. And, of course, finally, the man himself. I mean, what can you say about Steve Palmer? There is only one Steve Palmer. He is unique and he is wonderful. Um, I think this show would be a success if you just had someone with Steve's knowledge and expertise and judgment coming on and bringing you tips each week, which is obviously the fundamental of the show. But I think what elevates it to something so special for me, at least, is, is just Steve's incredible combination like I could say of that knowledge and that judgment and that expertise and that ability to find winner after winner but also you know the madness and the chaos and the and the zany randomness of it all you know one minute we'll be talking about your third selection for the northern trust open and the next you know we'll suddenly be talking about some crazy incident happening in your barber shop you know <laughs> Steve the one thing I will say is and I've said it to you before you know it but I'm going to say it again on this show I want you to tone down the anguish when things aren't going well, because I know how hard it is when you're picking golf winners. It's eight to one the field, 10 to one the field. You're going to go a long time between payouts. Please don't be so hard on yourself. You know, the audience loves you for you. They appreciate you. You're good at picking winners. And they know that by the nature of it, you're going to go a long time. Sometimes you're going to have these famines. So please don't be so hard on yourself. But you know, I want to say thank you. I've absolutely loved doing the show with you. Tuesday morning is always the highlight of my week. Um, you know, it, it's just been so much fun. I'm going to miss it so much, but I hope you're going to be a friend for life. I hope I'm still going to get all those mad messages from you on a Thursday morning when one of your players has, has started birdie birdie and you'll you text me and say, why don't they just give him the trophy now? <laughs> and then... <laughs> Three days later, when the same player has blown a five-shot lead, you'll send me a message saying, you know, there must be more to life than this. <laughs> so I think we've got a game of golf scheduled in your hectic schedule on about November the 28th, haven't we? So I look forward to that. But, Steve, thank you so much for years and years of brilliant, brilliant company on the show. Good luck with Jack. I know you're going to be absolutely brilliant. I'm done. Mate, we've had some fun, haven't we? We have, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Bruce. That was a, that was a great speech, and uh, yeah, it's been an absolute blast. 23 years we've been working together, 23 years, and I, I don't think I'll be working 23 years with Jack Reeve because uh, my life expectancy <laughs> will <laughs> make sure that doesn't happen. Um, uh, my life insurance policies are in place. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, no, it's been an absolute blast. Um, yeah, it has. And um, yeah, yeah, you, and you may come back, you may come back, yeah, you never know. There might no. be some cameo appearances. Well, I'm, I'm assuming not. I'm going to become the Sweet Spot's number one fan starting next week when Reeve and Steve will be taking you through the Alfred Dunhill Championship and the Sanderson's Farm. So do join them for that. Many thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the Ryder Cup. The boys are back next Tuesday. <laughs>